Let me ask you a question. Has there ever been a time along your stepmom journey where you found yourself looking in the mirror and having no idea who the heck the person was who was staring back at you? The fact of the matter is that when you become a stepmom, it usually involves entirely redefining your identity. No matter how prepared you think you are, no matter how supportive your spouse is, and no matter how easily your step family dynamics might be, the simple truth is that everything changes once you step into this role. In our case study of the week, you'll hear about the powerful transformation that our stepmom story member and Gatchel Green Street went through as she did the work necessary to define her new role as a stepmom of two. Where would you take your life if you knew you could not fail? I get it. As a stepmom, mom, and entrepreneur, sometimes it can feel like what everyone else expects of you versus what you dream about for yourself are on opposite ends of the spectrum. As a woman, you're taught from a very young age what society thinks you're worth based on how you look, how you behave, and how much money you're allowed to bring in. But I'm here to show you that you can be the woman who has it all, and not just on the outside. I'm Brittany Lynch, and you are the queen of your castle. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Queen of Your Castle podcast. I am your host, Brittany Lynch, and I have a very special episode for you today. I have one very special guest on the show for you. I would love to introduce you to Anne Gatchel Green Street, and I'll let Anne introduce herself a little bit more in just a second. But first, I'm going to gush about Anne. As you know, right now, we are in a little bit of a segment in the podcast where we are highlighting our most incredible transformations from our sisters in the stepmom story who have had their lives change for the better since joining our community. And when Anne came, Anne was a little bit of a straggler. She kind of came out of nowhere and joined and joined the stepmom story. And I'm so glad that she, that she did. Um, we were just talking a little bit before we started recording about how how different life is since she since she joined us not even a year ago. So I will let Anne introduce herself. Um, and I'm so excited for you to get to know her and to see what amazing things have become possible for her in not even a year. So Anne, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so happy to have you. Thanks for having me. So right. why don't you go ahead and like just break the ice for us and let our listeners know, like, who are you? Where do you live? What do you love to do? Who's a part of your set family? Who is Anne Gatchel Green Street? <laughs> All right, cool. So yes, I am. I live in Boulder, Colorado. Um, I grew up in Colorado, United States, um, and my uh, my step family consists of me and my husband and his daughter and son. And, um, we've been married for a little over four years now. And I lived with them, um, like a year before we got married, like after we got engaged. So it's been, yeah, almost five years living with them. Um, and then as for what I like to do, what I do, um, I, I work as a software engineer, um, and have been, you know, in that field for quite some time. Um, but I've been an artist my whole life and, um, you know, have kept, kept up my practice with my art, you know, throughout, throughout all my different like engineering and technical jobs. And, um, and right now I'm focusing on, um, you know, trying to make that level of, you know, of artistic practice, you know, while you're in a technical job possible for, um, for others like me who, you know, maybe went into a practical career, but haven't been, you know, making time for their art. So that's kind of my, my thing right now. <laughs> Amazing. And I, you know, as, as you very well know, had that story also as a writer and I went into the sciences and we're very excited to see what's happening with you opening up the opening up the door for professionals who want to get back in touch with their art practices. It's so amazing. Yeah. 
And I want to go back in time a little bit. We're going to step into our time machine and we're going to go back to the beginning of your stepmothering career. Stepmother. I call it a career because it's work. <laughs> stepmothering is work. Uh-huh. Let's go back in time. Let's get in our time machine. Go back in your stepmothering career. I always, I always laugh, not laugh, not funny, ha ha, but like laugh when, <laughs> when a new stepmom has created a vision in her mind about what life is going to look like. Right. I meet this amazing person. We fall in love. Everything is so great. I have this fantasy about what our life is going to look like, how I'm going to be with the kids, how I'm going to be with the ex, what everything's going to be look like, what, what everything's going to look like. It's all going to be tickety boo. I'm curious. Did you have this like fairy tale fantasy about what life was going to look like with your now husband when you guys first met? And was that vision of what you thought stepmom- stepmoming was going to be like? the same or different than the way that it turned out to be once you jumped in with both feet? Gosh. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I feel like I had my, my image of what it would be like. Ah, It's yeah. I got to think back to it. I mean, I know. So at the very, even like before we, I think definitely before we moved in together, I was like, I was looking for books and stuff and to try and like get a picture of like what this would be like. Cause I was not one who like was just a natural with kids. Um, so I think my, um, you know, my husband was just, I think his vision was like, that was a very like sound of music kind of, <laughs> kind of vision. Um, and I mean, I think that I kind of had hope for that, but wasn't like, but didn't, I didn't have like the thought that I would like become the kids, like, like some, like a replacement mother or something like that. Um, uh, I, I, like, I had read a book that, you know, kind of was like, Hey, you know, you know, you're they still have a mom and, and whatnot. And so I think I had like some realistic thoughts about that. Um, but I, um, I think I was, it was almost like going into it as like, okay, if I just hold really still, like, like this is good, this will work out, you know, um, if that makes any sense, um, like kind of just, um, it was, it was almost like a, like a, let's, okay, let's just hold, hold your breath and we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> like maybe it'll all be okay. Um, so it was, uh, I felt like I was taking more, I, yeah, I don't know if any of that makes sense, but like, I was like, kind of just, it, it makes a lot of yeah. sense. It's like, if I don't, maybe if I don't say anything, then I yes, won't say yeah. the wrong thing. If I don't right. do anything, I can't do uh-huh. the wrong thing. Um, uh-huh. yeah, it makes, it uh-huh. makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. probably for a lot of people listening. I love that mm-hmm. analogy. If I'm just like, stand still, maybe no one will notice yeah. that here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm curious how it felt for you, though, like knowing that your husband kind of had these expectations mm-hmm. about what you would, um, what kind of role that you would take on, like what kind of pressure did that did that create for you, knowing that he like essentially wanted you to to probably slip into that role in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was like I I ended up feeling like okay, I need to I. I think something I fell into a lot was like, oh, I, okay. Now I I need to like continually communicate like what it's actually like for me to him. Um, like I need him to, it's, it's not as, it's not like, you know, instantly as easy as, as, or the same relationship you have, like with your, you know, biological kids after you have a kid. Um, I felt like he didn't like under, you know, he didn't, Oh, he doesn't understand exactly what it's like. So I'm going to explain it again (laughs) to him. Um, And so I think that that, like, I don't know, that led to like unhelpful, like dynamics, like, you know, it's not like me just explaining this over and over again, or like, you know, explaining it in like more and more dramatic ways. Um, You know, I think that's kind of where, where that kind of conflict arises, like, and I wouldn't say it, it didn't lead to like crazy knockdown drag ass or anything. Like, I mean, we have, I think like he and I had like a really great relationship, but, um, it was not helpful. Like as I, 
you know, with those different differing kind of expectations and then me feeling like, oh, I have to be heard or I have to like explain exactly, um, <laughs> exactly why it's, why it's hard. Um, and I, and cause hard is, yeah, that's a, it's a, sorry to cut you off. Um, yeah. this is a, this is a thing for, for a lot of us stepmoms where we're like, maybe if I can have, maybe if my partner can see things the way that I see them, right? Like maybe mm -hmm. if they understand what my experience is like, it'll change their expectations. Mm -hmm. And as you know, from going through the story, like this come, these like kind of dynamics come from the fact of, um, folks having like unrealistic expectations, right? Like it doesn't matter how many times you explain this to your spouse, like he'll never be able to see things the way that you see them because he's not you. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. And, and I'm curious, like when you say it created some like unhelpful dynamics, if you don't mind sharing a little bit about that, like what specifically did that, did that look like? Like what kind of dynamics, like, did he feel like you were like attacking? I know you said it didn't turn into mm. like a blowout or anything, but like, did it create him to be defensive? Did your communication shut down? What were the kind of yeah. patterns that were coming from this like tendency for you to, from what I'm hearing over explain, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Over, over explain what the experience was like for you. And yeah. What was that pattern? Because we pattern our, yeah. we pattern our yeah. communication, right? So what's yeah. that look like for you? Yeah. It would be like, I, um, I would kind of, you know, things like, so, I mean, I should say like, I mean, he didn't, I, I think some stepmoms like get expected to like take on a bunch of duties and stuff. Um, and I, I didn't feel like I was like expected to become a replacement mother. Um, I feel like I can, I did communicate like that pretty quick, pretty well, like, or, and I kept, I kept some boundaries, but, um, but like, I would, it seemed like we would get into a cycle of like, you know, things are going, things are moving along. And then I would, it was like, I had, I, I like an analogy I've heard before is like, you have a cup and I would like not be like emptying my cup, I would like, I would build up, I don't know, some, some number of, I got enough grievances is the right word, but like challenges. Um, and then eventually it would just kind of overflow. And I would kind of, I would either have like a bit of a bit of a breakdown or like, <laughs> or just be like, I'm scared of this interaction. And like, I don't know how to act. I don't know how to be um, like, it's so hard. And then that that me saying like, it's so hard kind of brings in a little bit of, com would bring in a little bit of comparison. Cause like to him hard is when the kids are like babies and that you can't sleep. And like, that's, and that's hard. And he's had like a bunch of, <laughs> he's had like a bunch of hard stuff in his life. And so like, that's all really hard now. Like the kids are easy peasy. So we just had just that different definition and that, that would cause um, just that, that either me just melting down and him having to absorb it or, um, me shutting down or, um, I mean, we did have one, I remember one time like us just like talking on this, on the street, like on the way to dinner and like me just like, kind of like going, going dramatic and him finally just being like, that's <laughs> like, this isn't hard. Like <laughs> X is hard. X is hard. Like, you know, we, you know, you're not being realistic. Um, that must have felt pretty yeah. validating though, because in your experience and in all of our experiences, like stepmothering is very hard, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, 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 yeah, it's, and I, I feel like I remember one time not to swap tit for tat stories, but mm -hmm. one time I remember one time, um, kind of something similar where I was like trying to over explain to my own husband. And he's like, you are acting like a child, right? Mm -hmm. You're the one acting like the child, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of the mm -hmm. same shut down as like, this isn't hard. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, that's one reason that I love our community. So, so, so very much is because, it's okay when we say that things are hard, we are like met, we meet each other with like open arms and a soft place to mm -hmm. land to be like, you know what, that is really hard and that is really shitty And here. Let's figure out how to get out of it. Because mm -hmm. 
a lot of the time, a lot of the time, our partners are not the right people to help us work our stuff, our stepmom stuff out on. And, and, and it feels like, it feels like this is like creating intimacy, right? We have this thought, at least I can speak for myself and, and make some generalizations because of some of the people that I've worked with in the past. We have this, got this thought that we're creating intimacy by either oversharing or trying to get our partners to see things the way that we see them. Um, but they're not the, they're not the right person a lot of the time, especially in those beginning years when they're trying to navigate everything as well, when they're trying to kind of keep the peace with their ex and make sure their kids are taken care of and everything else. And then here we come and all of our drama and all of our like, <laughs> pay attention to me. This is hard yeah. for me too, right? It's uh-huh. like maybe I had a, I've had a conversation with my husband on the podcast actually way back when where he talks about this, right? Like how they have to keep all the plates in the air. So as great as it can be to communicate with our spouses about what's going on for us, a lot of the time we get ourselves into trouble, especially in the beginning, because we want our spouses to be able to work our stepmom stuff out for us and and they can't do that. So while this kind of, while this um, communication pattern was kind of developing with you and these communication pattern cycles were, were developing with you. What sorts of like resources were you seeking out? Like, what were you leaning on for support? I know that you said you'd read some books that were kind of like helpful-ish, but was there anything else that you did that that helped you to feel like supported in this transition, in this growth period, in this merging, blending phase? Yeah. Yeah. So I actually like, I did only, I had only had one book that like I found that I was like, oh, this... I can like identify a little bit with this book, but all the other ones were very just, I don't know. I would like read the first sentence and be like, yeah, this isn't my people or (laughs) or something like that. Um, So, but I did like, I got Stepmom magazine and read articles in there. And then I would, I would go on those forums sometimes, but I, I, like, I feel like, um, and I, you know, I got like some good advice on like wills (laughs) once, but (laughs) which was, uh, you know, that's good, but, um, conversation. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they can get, I don't know. They're just can get negative and maybe not like get to like a healthy resolution. Um, although I did, that is where I found, got the, like the started my trail to finding you. So it was like very, help, very helpful in that way. Cause I was like, I need, like, I need like a real, real time support. I need like something, uh, just something that's more in line with, um, where I want to go. But, um, I also, so one thing that was helpful for me, like along the way, and, you know, I did have growth this way was like, I, so I see like a a Chinese medicine, like acupuncturist gal and it's, and so she's, she's just like super intuitive. It's like needleless acupuncture. So it's like, you know, Boulder woo woo, but, um, we, uh, you know, she, she, I would talk to her kind of as in the capacity of like a, like a therapist, you know, and she would give, and she had, she actually had a, has a son that's like the, you know, same age as my stepdaughter. And, um, and so she, she would, she was helpful, like in, in a lot of ways. Um, and so, you know, I, I was able to work through some things that way, but, um, wasn't sort of energe- quite... some sort of energetic, like blockages and stucknesses and those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and she, well, like guess basically what she would do for me is she would, she would like, I was having stomach aches like all the time, <laughs> you know? And so that's why I was seeing her and like, she would fix some like imbalances, but she would, but she would tell me like, you know, most of this is just emotion that you're like shoving down. And, um, so I, I, I learned with her to like recognize, oh, I'm doing this, but, um, like I needed to learn how to, I needed to like, go, you know, go, go beyond, um, just like realizing like, oh, I'm having non emotions. Like I need to <laughs> like, but what are they? You know, how do I get yeah. What are they? Like, how do yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> totally. So, yeah. So. Um, I, I love, I love that needleless acupuncture. That's the only reason I've never gone for acupuncture is because I can't, <laughs> Yes, I can't, do, I couldn't do the needle. So I'm going to absolutely get to this. Sounds just woo woo enough for me. Yes. I, I've got a question for you. It, and this is just something that I've observed with like a great majority of us as stepmoms is like, there comes a time 
for a lot of us in our relationships where we kind of get to this like crossroads and I call it the TSN turning point. And it's like, we get to this place and we have either read all the books or scoured those toxic forums or done whatever, whatever we have tried to do to be able to essentially blend our set families. And for a lot of us, there's like a very defining moment in time where we're either like, I need to, something has got to change like right now, or I have to leave this relationship because I cannot live my life like this forever. Like it's, it's got to change. Did you have a TSN turning point in your relationship? Um, if so, what was that like? If not, what was that like too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I had, I re- we had this like during the, during the pandemic. Um, I mean, I've had like, I feel like similar to like my communication patterns, I would kind of have cycles too. Um, so I've had like, I, I, I can recall like a couple times where I would, I was just like, wh- like what, a, you know, I'd need to figure out how to like, how to be here. Um, you know, I, we, I was on a bike ride like with my husband and we had like the dumbest collision. Like it was so we were like literally just riding on a dirt road and we were like, riding close to each other. And I like looked over to look at a sign. And when you like turn your head, your bike kind of moves and I like ran into him and we like tumbled. It was just ridiculous. And so then he was like, he was injured (laughs) and it was just, and I don't know, that kind of like triggered this, like, you know, he's riding back ahead of me. And then I'm, I'm just like on my bike, like crying. (laughs) Like I, what am I doing? Like, I, I'm like, I felt like unsure in my career. I felt like, un, like, I don't want to deny the progress I had made, but like, and all the good times that we, I did have with my step family. And like, so I don't want to like say that, like, it was, you know, I, I wasn't supported, but like, I, I still didn't know how to be and feel like completely like myself and feel comfortable. And I was like, I, I feel like I'm, I was at that crossroads kind of at work as well as at home. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta like do something else. Like I gotta find, um, someone who knows about this, like specifically, um, to help me. So, um, that was kind of like, I think the triggering point for, um, for seeking you out. Sure. And, and, and that's like such a, I'm sure a lot of people listening can resonate with that feeling of like, this can't, this can't Mm -hmm. be it. You know, like I, I, I often think of like all the times that I would like look at myself in the mirror and be like, who Mm -hmm. am I? Like, what did I do with my life? Like, this is not me. This is not me. I'm not meant to be here. I'm not meant to be feeling like this. Like I'm a stranger staring back at myself, trying to like mold myself into this version of whatever. I have no idea who I am. I hate the sciences. (laughs) I'm a writer. I'm not a scientist, right? Like what am I doing with my life? What Mm -hmm. am I doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, for lack of a better term, it's like an identity crisis. Yeah. Yeah. It totally is. And it's, it's just, it, it's like a very, it, yeah, it's just like, you're trying, you're not sure how to be and you're not, um, you, and it doesn't mean that like, I don't know, like everything, everything can like appear like great and wonderful. Like you can, you know, maybe be looking like really good on the outside, but just still not be a hundred percent sure about like, what's, what's my role and how do I behave? Um, yeah. And it's funny. I remember, I remember you saying something to me way back when, when we first met about that was something that you, that you said was so, so attracting for you to me mm-hmm. was this thing that I say about how you can be the woman who has it all and not just on the outside. Yeah. Right. Because yes. I've lived in this space and so have so many women where on the outside looking in, everything's perfect. You've got the picket fence, you've got the golden retriever, you've got the, you've got it all, yeah. right? But inside you feel like you're dying. It's like that Bernstein Bears app, like rotten apple <laughs> um, story. Do you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's, 
let's now kind of let's pick out from like the bike collision, like riding home, having this identity crisis, feeling like, who am I? Right. Like I'm not super satisfied in my career. Like I don't know how to be in my stuff family. I need some help. You through the magic of the stepmom magazine forums ended up finding your way to me. We had a conversation and then, you know, for, if you're listening, most people don't get, don't get into the stepmom story this way. You know, I have a very specific time that I enroll people into the stepmom story. And if you miss that, then you have to wait for the next time that, that I enroll. But the way that Anne came, the conversations that we end up having, I felt a really quick connection with her, like right off, right off the hop. So we had a conversation and she joined the stepmom story later than the enrollment period. Um, we had wrapped up the enrollment like maybe a month or two before. Um, so she was an exception to getting in while, while the doors were closed, um, which I'm so happy that I made that exception because she has been exceptional. She was really ready to run with the, with the work. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's now fast forward. So you have this collision. You <laughs> are feeling a little bit lost. You join the stepmom story through the back door. We let you in. You click instantly with the group. You become this bright light, this bright light in our group and throw yourself into the work and do the things and show up on the calls and you're super coachable. And we had a few good cries on some coaching calls together, <laughs> and, which is was so great. And now what is life? What is a day in the life of Anne Gatchel Green Street? now that you have been with us for almost a year. Yeah. Oh man. Um, yeah, it's just like night and day. Um, yeah, I, one of the biggest differences, um, is that I feel, I feel like that calm. I feel like the like equanimity that I was like hoping for. Um, I feel like, yeah, one of the biggest things, (laughs) one of the first things that started to happen was that I, like, I feel like I can be myself. I feel like I, I feel like I know my place in, in like, in like all the situations, like, you know, I could maybe have understood my place, um, you know, in, in some situations previously, um, or kind of like, I shoved myself in to try and try and fit something before, but, but now, you know, like in a given day, you know, I'm not like, I'm not thinking about where, you know, how should I act? What should I say? I'm, it's like, I'm just taking life as it comes and just have like this brand new perspective. And, um, and I think some of the biggest, um, things, that I would like point out would be that I have like this, I have like a sense of compassion that is just like, it's like deeper on a whole different level, um, like for the kids and for my husband and for, like for, for everybody. Um, and it's been like, it's just like, so it's been like super transformative to, um, to feel that. And I think, um, And it just like, it it informs like all my encounters with them. Um, And the, and I mean, another big one to a big thing that just, I feel every day is that um, like when bumps in the road come and challenges come, it's like, you can like be like, ah, what's, what's happening for a second. But then it's like, I have the tool set and like kind of the wherewithal to, to stand back and be like, all right, well, okay, that's, this is just life. Like, we're just going to deal with this. And this is, and it's so cool because like when, when things come up with the kids, like, I mean, whereas I would normally just like freak out and be like, what are we going to do? Like, what are we going to do? Like something's wrong. Like, how are we going to, how are we going to handle this? Um, it's, I just view it as like, yeah, this is like an opportunity to to get closer and to build and to, to build. And this is an opportunity, um, to, for all of us to grow, um, no matter what it is, like something with school, something with, you know, with friends, whatever. Um, yeah, it's just been like, so, so different. Would you have described yourself as a compassionate person 
this time last year, like in your, inter- in your mind, would, was that a, an adjective you would use to describe yourself would be compassionate? Hmm. Well, I mean, I would like, I feel like I would have liked to, but, but kind of like you were saying before, um, you're unsure who, you know, who am I? Like, what, what am I, who am I? Um, you, I felt like, yes, I, I was a compassionate person, but I didn't have, but it wasn't at, I wasn't like able to have it at the, at this same like deep level, I guess. And so I think I had like some insecurity about that too. Cause like, I I felt like my husband, like he's just like infinitely compassionate for the kids and is like, he's just such a good, um, you know, he's just like a, like a calm, steady presence for them. But I like, didn't have, I didn't like understand how to like where that came from, I guess, or like, I didn't have an understanding of that. Um, so I think I would have said like, yeah, well, I, I mean, I think I am a compassionate person, but I have trouble in these like situations. Um, and I would have felt some, I would have felt conflicted about saying that Mm. I was truly, (laughs) truly able to be as compassionate as I, as I wanted to be. Um, And what, what was like, what changed for you? Because like, when you say that, you know, when, when difficult things arise, like specifically with the kids, you're able to kind of lean into those uncomfortable places with them. And now you see those as opportunities to develop closeness, right? Like these Mm -hmm. issues that maybe this time last year would have been kind of catastrophic and, and creating separation. Now they are now that you can approach these with compassion, these are actually opening up an environment to, to, to create more, more closeness. And and that's because this compassion has developed for you where it's like, this isn't about me. This is not personal. This is not them trying to hurt me. Right. Like how must it feel for them to be in this situation that probably feels really uncomfortable for them? How can I support them in this place? That is all a byproduct of this compassion muscle of yours being, being so developed. So what had to shift for you to get there, like to be able to do this, where the version of you this time last year would have created an opportunity to disconnect in these situations? Mm-hmm. What shifted? Yeah. Um, I think, um, well, like this is all, like so much of this is like internal work um, and um, just like understanding myself better. Um, And like really after kind of learning to, I mean, I think, yeah, so much is about like this, like this personal work and internal work. And um, it's like doing the internal work um, and learning how to like view a situation just from a different vantage point. Um, it was like, it, it opened the way to just see things differently. It's like, you tell us like every time we go through like a chapter of the story, we're a different person when we, you know, when we go through it, uh, it's really true. Um, and like, I had heard, you know, in one of our trainings, we talked about like how, you know, the stages of child development and stuff like that. And like how, like the brains are, are there, you know, their brains are developing in these ways. And, um, and, uh, and it was like a super interesting talk and it's like, everyone probably understands that intellectually, but it like, after having done the work that I did, um, it's like, I understood it at a different level, I guess. Um, and it just, it's like, oh, you know, and like my kids, like, like my stepkids, like, aren't like, um, they're not like, they're like awesome stepkids to have. Like, I got really lucky with these, with these kids. Like most, most of the time, um, uh, you know, there's like an issue would be like, something's not right at school or something's, you know, or they're upset about something and like, oh my God, like, like it was, it was just a, uh, 
I would just like, like a tantrum would kind of just freak me out. I'll be like, what are we supposed to do? But like hat, armed with kind of that new way of looking at things, it's like, no, like this is just, this is just like something, this is just like an event. And these emotions that they're expressing is just, are just an event, um, just this, like a storm and they're just going to pass. Um, and it, it just like having, having that, having done the self-work to see, to understand that kids in a new way, um, it just allows, allows me to just see them from a whole different vantage point. Um, and I, you know, that's what kind of one of, as much as I do this, as much as I do the work that I do for step moms, because we need, we need it, right? Step moms need a, a, a great, a great place. As much as I do it for step moms, the kind of ripple effect of, of a step mom, you know, choosing to join a program like the story, for example, and doing this work is that it does end up rippling out to the kids, right. And to their kids and to their kids and to their kids, because we're able to like break cycles of invalidating little people's feelings. We're yeah. able to break cycles of like punishing kids for having tantrums. We're able to break cycles of punishing kids period, because we know yeah. developmentally based on the science, what that does. Mm -hmm. And, and it's really, it's really like one of kind of the, from my vantage point, point of like observing the growth that happens with each of you amazing women inside of the story is the way that this does ripple out into the kids and the way that this chain this changes the game for them too right and mm -hmm. and how healing is that and what an amazing accomplishment that that is to not just be this work isn't just about you anymore right now mm -hmm. the ripple effect of of the work that you've done isn't, and it's not just about your stepkids either. It's about like having a, a, an entirely different focus and showing up in the world in an entirely different way because you see the world in a different way and you yes. are closer to being in alignment with this like version of you that feels really, really good all of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the amazing things that happen, not because you've made a whole ton of changes, but just because you're able to hold yourself in a different kind of energetic space yes. as, yeah. you, as you live each and every day and there doesn't even have to be anything external that changes I think that's right. something that's like when when people realize you know nothing about my life has changed but I feel mm -hmm. so much better right yes yes <laughs> that's why it's like it's so hard to say like oh this is how my day-to-day -day is like different it's just like it's your way of being in the day and um and yeah it's just I, I don't know it's just amazing because I like I, I my default would be to just like to shrink back and to like become a wallflower if something was going wrong and like disappear. Cause I didn't, I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to be, I don't know how to act. I don't know the right thing to say. Um, whereas now it's like, I feel like, I, you know, you may not know the right answer to the situation, but I feel like I'm able to step forward in, a, in situations. Um, like, I mean, online school was really, really rough to, to start sixth grade in this like online pandemic school. And it, you know, it was not good. And I ended up being, um, like I had some, some like hesitations about it, like initially, I guess, um, and like some fears, but just through like all the work that, that you know, I had done with all of you in the stories, I, um, I was able to like step in, step in and become like, I was like the perfect person to be like, you know, the school helper <laughs> because there's like a special, there's, it's like, we all know that like having a teacher, there's a reason you like put your kids in like the ski school or like the, the, the gymnastics program. Cause like, it's a different person. It's not the parent trying to make the kid do the thing. Um, so the, I was having being in that like stepmom role was actually really helpful for um like trying to get a handle on like how are we going to deal with like this ridiculously hard like transition to middle school um and um I just I was able to step into that in a way I just never would have been able to before um and be it was like I had just like a pure intention mm -hmm. like I wanted I wanted 
work on this with you. I want to help you through like this assignment and teach you how to like do this assignment. And um, so that you can, you know, gradually like learn, like, this is what it, yeah, this is what middle school is. And this is what, you know, and just such a different, I just couldn't have imagined myself like being able to like be in that that role of like helper and tutor and like comforter I would just it would, would not have been possible like a year before <laughs> not that I wouldn't have wanted to I just wouldn't have known how to how to be and how to do that um, right yeah amazing yeah. amazing absolutely amazing <laughs> I have kind of one final question for you do you still get stomach aches Oh, <laughs> I get them sometimes. Um, I, uh, you know, now they're more related to like, uh, I don't, like I get them sometimes, but I am able to understand. Um, I'm much more able to like, to step back and understand, you know, okay, what's going on. They're not really about, um, now they're more of it's if I have a stomach ache, it's really more about like work <laughs> or something like that or something else I'm nervous about. Um, it's not this like it was literally like every day I would wake up and just like have like a stomach ache. And now it's not it's not every day. And I am able to t- like step back and like understand, you know, what I'm, you know, OK, well, what's like what's present in me? Um, and it's. I'm able to, like, I have, I'll have times where I'm like, I need to go like release some emotion and, um, and I don't know, I have like techniques to do that. Um, so it's like, it's, it's just night and day. Um, and I, I, maybe one more thing I want to say, I don't know, I don't know if it matches a question, but, um, I feel like, like, I don't know if I said this before, but I, um, I feel like it's really easy to, um, to be, to think like probably as a parent too, but as a step, step parent to think when things are going well. And like, even when you've gone through all this work, you think like, okay, we did it. We did it. Things are going really well. Everything's going perfect. Um, and kind of like, you know, dust off your hands and be like, it's going great. And then the next day, like something goes wrong. And, um, you know, whereas like previously I might've had the perspective of like, oh my God, like nothing's going right. Like, what are we going to do? Um, now I have like the perspective to stand back and be like, oh, okay, well, this is like number one, an opportunity um, for closeness, how can I, like, how can I grow through this, um, and just, I don't know, just, it's like, I don't know, it's just a cool new way to look at life, um, like, life is, life is awesome because of all the challenges that, the, the challenges that, you know, we confront in life are, like, opportunities for growth, basically, I mean, and that's why, like, now I legitimately feel like, this family that I like became a part of is like, is like the best thing that could have happened to me. And I, I know you say that and it's like, but it's so true. Like I'm growing in ways in just in my compassion and in my personal life, I'm like getting misty. Um, and in my career and my, my passions, because I had to figure out like a new way to exist um, and, and be myself. And yeah, it's just amazing. (laughs) It is amazing. It's amazing to witness. And, you know, it's like, I know that I say, I know that I say this and people are like, not in this lifetime. I'll say (laughs) all the time, like your step family, very literally has the opportunity. You have the opportunity to have your step family be the best thing that's ever happened to you. Right. Which feels like a really, 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 really big stretch. The first time, (laughs) second time, third time, fourth time that you hear that. Right. Because it feels like hell. Sometimes it feels like purgatory. Like you're straddled somewhere. Like, I don't know. This is just like, not doesn't feel good. 
So mm-hmm. to feel like this really hard thing, there's no way that this is ever going to be the best thing that's ever happened. And then I watch, I stand above and I watch what's happening. <laughs> And for a lot of people, your Stefanos do become the best thing. And and like you said, it's not, you know, this work that we do inside of the story, it's not, it's not just about learning. It's in fact, none of it is about learning how to like set up a rule chart or no, no. or like coordinate pickups and drop-offs. Like none of it is what you would expect, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like that. It's yeah. Whole... It's just like it's work at a higher it's at at a better, like a higher level. It's higher level work to like because like once you take care of that, it all trickles down, right? Like I like I just am I'm just like over the moon about like where my relationships are right now with my stepkids, um, and like it's and my husband like it's it's great. I um, yeah yeah I'm grateful for the new perspective. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm so, I'm so grateful to have watched you blossom over the last little while. Your stepkids are very lucky to have you as their stepmom. For somebody who doesn't know how to deal with kids, you've sure come a long. <laughs> you've sure, yes. you've sure come a long, a long way. In oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I was like, I was never a babysitter. How am I going to do this? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, but you figured it out. So you figured it out. Yeah. 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 If you were a version of you one year ago listening to this podcast right now, what would you like be thinking? Wow. Yeah, I would. Well, I mean, I would be like, I feel like, well, that sounds pretty cool. Like I, <laughs> if that's going to happen to me, I mean, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I got yeah, a year ago. Um, yeah, I would have been like, all right, let's, let's, let's freaking go for it. I mean, I, <laughs> that would be incredible. It would seem incredible. Yeah. And what, what advice if you could like, pop in your time machine and go visit yourself a year ago like what would you say to yourself a year ago like what message Mm -hmm. would you give to that that version of you Mm. that it's okay it's okay to go get support it's okay you know it's gonna be okay (laughs) and that like you have everything you need inside of you you just you know you just need to learn how to like how to harness it basically like you have you have what it takes and you have everything you need um you just need you just need a little bit of a just need a a push and a commitment is there anything else Anne, that you want to share with our listeners um i guess i'd say like like i it's so, it's really cool to see like new folks who've joined, um, the story, uh, since I've, you know, been here, like I'm, I've been around (laughs) and they'll tell, they'll tell stories and I'll be like, I had that exact, I was in that exact story. I was in that exact situation. I was like in their thought pattern. And it's like, and it's really cool to see like, it's cool to, you know, be able to pop in and like give them some, give them, you know, some like my perspective, give them like that love. And, um, and, you know, I think that perspective has helped them, you know, can help them as well. Um, so that's been like super awesome. Um, but it's also like, what's coolest about that is that like if I, when I see it, I'm like, oh, I was there. Like you can, you can get past this. Like I feel so, like, cause it's like, I did, I got past it. I was there and I'm like, I'm here now. Like, and so that means that they are there and they can be here now. And it's just about, it's about the practice and the commitment. And, um, so it's just really cool to see that, um, see others growing as well. Um, and like, yeah. It's just all inside, inside of all of us. It's just like, we have to learn how to, how to harness, you know, kind of all of our power, I guess. Um, yeah. 
It is. It sounds so cliche. It does. I know. <laughs> it's the reason cliches are cliche. Is it, uh, isn't there? Like, there's a reason people say everything. Yeah. You've got everything you need. You just got to yeah. gotta believe in yourself. You just got to do yeah. it. Sounds so yeah. cliche, but I mean, it's the truth. God. Mm-hmm. Truth. Yeah. And I guess I would also say is like, I mean, there are people in all sorts of situations. I could never really imagine all the situations, you know, people are in. Um, and I like maybe to some, like my, my stuff, my step family situation was like really great. Like in a lot of ways, like before I joined, like I shouldn't, I'm, it wasn't like any, like you had said, like nothing, nothing was wrong. Like we would have, we'd play Scrabble and we'd laugh and like, it was, we had so much good and I had come, you know, I had been trying so hard and working, um, to try and try and make, you know, be a good stepmom. Um, but without that kind of fundamental, just like shift in my viewpoint, um, it's like, it wasn't like settled, I guess, or I wasn't settled and now I feel settled. Um, yeah. And I think that that's some, like, I'm, I'm really glad that you brought that up too, because it can feel sometimes like, you know, we have, we create these stories based on like social programming and what we believe uh, of is true in the world. And, mm-hmm. and I feel like there can be kind of this like thought pattern with a lot of stepmoms, like, well, my life's really not that bad, right? Like mm-hmm. I don't really have a whole lot to complain about. Like my stepkids are pretty cool. Like their other parents yeah. are pretty awesome. Like my yeah. spouse is great. I don't have a lot to complain about. I feel like I'm dying inside, but I shouldn't feel that way. And we like invalidate the experience because nothing is air quote wrong. Right. Yes. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter the intensity of the situation. You know, Seba Magazine says, even when it's good, it's complicated, right? That's Mm -hmm. their tagline. Mm -hmm. And it's the truth. And the reason is nobody, none of us were born knowing how to be stepmoms. None of us. Mm -hmm. Stepmothering is a skill. And the good Mm -hmm. thing about a skill is that anyone in the world can develop a skill. Not something that you or I were innately born with knowing how to do was being a stepmother. And it doesn't matter Mm -hmm. how much you like kids or how much you dislike kids. It doesn't matter if you're a teacher. It doesn't matter if you're an early childhood educator. None of it matters when you get into the stepmom role because it'll bring stuff up for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That has nothing to do with your step family that your step family is showing you about yourself. Yes. Yes. Circles back to the conversation about how our step families are the best things that ever happened, have ever happened to us. Right. Because Mm -hmm. What step families do is they shine a big spotlight on all of the stuff that you've stuffed and hid and run from and not dealt with throughout your life and yeah, shit or get off the butt. (laughs) That's right. It's so true. That's like the perfect way to phrase it because yeah, that's how it was. I was like, not like nothing was wrong. Like I had great husband, great step kids, like you know, their mom is like a good mom, like, and she's, she's kind to me, like everything is, was good. Um, I just didn't have that like settled perspective and all that. Yeah. It was just shining a light on all the stuff I hadn't dealt with with myself. And, um, that led to me like not knowing how to be in my, in my family and how to like be comfortable. Um, and now I am comfortable. I, I, I'm able to, yeah, it just does. It's great. You're comfortable. You're yourself. Yeah. You've got a really cool relationship with your sub kids. Mm-hmm. You're thriving. You're thriving. You're glowing. You're moving. You're shaking. It's been amazing. Yeah. It's been amazing to watch. Um, yeah. I cannot wait to see what is going to be a year from now. Yeah. <laughs> Some really cool things in the works for you that. Yeah. And super excited to be cheering you on through. So mm-hmm. again, and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for sharing your story. Um, I know it can be so hard to explain like all of the time when I meet someone's like, I just want to be happy, right? Like, I just want to mm-hmm. be happy. I just want to feel good. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how do you know when these things happen, right? Like what needs to mm-hmm. happen in order for you to know that you're there? And it can be so hard to like qualify this, right? It can be so hard to to turn this into something that you observe because a lot of the time, nothing changes in your step family. When you go through the story, it just is a, a, a perspective shift that makes mm-hmm. these, these huge, massive changes. So yes, 
yeah, it's, it's something that, that needs to be witnessed, I think, and, and experienced mm-hmm. in order to, to be able to understand the full, the full gravity of, of what can happen when you develop and acquire a new set of lenses and fill your toolkit up with things to help you navigate conflict and break patterns and yes. heal. It's, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Can't thanks wait. for having me. What next year looks like for you. And, yes. and yeah, it's been a slice. Thank you so much, Anne. Thank you so much, Brittany, for everything. <laughs> I wanted to let you know about a special online mini training that I'm offering for free for a limited time. It's called Peace, Love, Stepmom. And not to toot my own horn, but beep, beep, it's pretty freaking awesome. Peace, Love, Stepmom will give you the exact steps to take in order to create more harmony in your step family without feeling like you have to walk on eggshells or bite your tongue or ignore your own needs just to keep the peace. Because if you are listening to this, then chances are pretty good that you know there's a big difference between not fighting and actually feeling peaceful. To enroll in Peace Love Stepmom and get immediate access to this incredible online course, head to peacelovestepmom.com and sign up. It's totally free. You don't want to miss it. So go to peacelovestepmom.com to enroll and get immediate access. I hope this episode got your wheels turning and showed you just how powerful you are. I would invite you to take 30 seconds and tap subscribe to this podcast. When you subscribe to the podcast, then rest assured you will never miss an episode. And in no time, spinning your wheels will be a thing of the past. Thank you for listening and subscribing. And if you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the absolute world to me if after you subscribed, you jumped on over and left me a five-star review and better yet, a written review. I am on a mission to let every mom and stepmom know that you can create the life of your dreams. And I need your help to change the world. The world needs us. Thank you so much for subscribing and leaving me a five-star review. I will see you next week. For more behind the scenes action and to get really up close and personal with me and our beautiful step family, jump on over to Instagram and follow me at the step queen. Don't be shy. Send me a DM. Tag me in your posts. Tag me in your stories. Let me know what you're up to and what about the podcast has been blowing your mind. I cannot wait to get to know you better. And Instagram is my jam. I love you so much. I love you so much. Make it rain, girlfriend.